right now on Five on Your Side at 10. St. Louis was sacked by the NFL, but was left a big sack of money. Tonight, the I-Team is tracking where the millions of Rams settlement dollars stand now. Temperatures worked their way into the low 70s this afternoon, and that's actually right on average. But we're going to see more of this off to the southwest. Warmer air settling in, how warm it gets, and when we return to fall. Our top story, the fighting intensifies in the Holy Land. As Israel formally declares war on Hamas, Tonight, we hear from St. Louisans affected, including a teacher forced to bunker down. It's an atmosphere filled with terror. Tonight, government sources confirm several U.S. citizens are among those killed in the deadly attacks on Israel. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Maxwell. Mike Bush has the night off. Israeli defense forces are now unleashing relentless air attacks on the Gaza Strip as they continue to battle groups of Hamas fighters holed up in towns across the country. Hundreds on both sides are dead. We're told other Americans may also be among the hundreds kidnapped and taken into Gaza by members of the Palestinian militant group during yesterday's surprise attacks. The Pentagon now says U.S. ships and aircraft are moving closer to the region. The focus now has to be on making sure that Israel has what it needs to deal with this attack uh, and uh, to make sure that its um, uh, citizens are safe and secure. Biden administration's move last month to unfreeze $6 billion in Iranian oil revenues in exchange uh, for five American prisoners. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says there's no evidence to Republican claims suggesting those assets helped Hamas fund the attack. There were rallies across the U.S. today, both in support of Israel and in support of the larger Palestinian cause. With emotions running high, security is being ramped up at synagogues and mosques nationwide. Here in St. Louis, both sides of the conflict uh, are watching the developments closely. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer has their reaction. Well, Mark, Islamic and Jewish advocacy groups in St. Louis region are organizing aid efforts as they call on Congress and leaders in the Middle East to find a path to peace and stop the bloodshed. Sunday, Israel officially declared war against the Palestinian military group Hamas. It comes after Hamas carried out surprise attacks in the Gaza Strip into southern Israel. Edward Ahmad Mitchell serves as the Council on American Islamic Relations National Deputy Director. So the solution to this crisis is clear in the occupation of Palestinian state based on their uh, original borders with East Jerusalem as their capital. That is what the Palestinian people have been asking for for, for decades. He says millions of Palestinians packed into the Gaza Strip have grown frustrated under Israeli rule. So they're trapped with nowhere to go. Israeli defense forces launched a counterattack striking military targets in the Strip in a bombing campaign. So I'd encourage all Americans to call their member of Congress and say, look, you know, I don't want my money going overseas to fund injustice. I want you to step in and say it's time for peace. Brian Herstig is the president and CEO of the Jewish Federation of St. Louis. He says the attacks follow a painful history of Jewish people being kicked out of every country they've lived in. There's an emotional connection that people have. And so we have many people from this community who have moved to Israel permanently, whose children are now serving in the military, who are being called up, who are fighting right now in this very war. The Federation has worked with partners in Israel to continue bulletproofing schools, homes, and offices. Herstig calls the nature of the war unprecedented. This is on a different scale. Never before have they breached Israeli borders. Um, done hand-to-hand -hand combat in the street with civilians. The bloodshed quickly claimed hundreds of lives on both sides in densely populated territory. It's too small of a country. Every single person has to help defend it. Jewish federations of North America, including the one right here in St. Louis, say they're responding and working with victims to rebuild infrastructure and address trauma as the conflict continues. Diamond, thanks. Tonight, Missouri's representatives are voicing their concerns about the conflict, prescribing very different pathways to peace. In a statement, Democratic Congresswoman Cori Bush said, quote, we must do our part to stop this violence and trauma by ending U.S. government support for Israeli military occupation and apartheid. Republican Ann Wagner says, quote, Israel has the absolute right to defend itself, and we stand with them unequivocally as they defend themselves against this unprovoked act of war. Pope Francis is calling for an end to the attacks and violence in Israel. During his weekly address in St. Peter's Square, the pontiff says he's following this with apprehension and sorrow. Tonight, a local teacher is bunkering down in Jerusalem. Madison Pines has been there for months teaching English to kids. The 22-year-old Marquette High School graduate says within minutes of the attacks, she was in a bomb shelter 
She has no idea when she can come home. It's an atmosphere filled with terror. I mean, we see Israeli families being taken hostage. We are seeing rockets exploding in front of us. We don't know what's happening. Airport, the airport is currently shut down. Pines is also worried for her friends who are on the front line. We'll continue to follow these latest developments on air and online at KSDK.com. You can also get updates on the Five on Your Side app and Five Plus. Tonight, a 60-year-old boy is safe after an intense search this evening in North St. Louis County. Police say the boy walked out of his home on Bramble Lane around 3 o'clock this afternoon. That's off Thunderbird Avenue and Lindbergh in Florissant. K-9 and air support teams assisted in the search. Police say the boy was found about four hours later. A violent weekend for teens in St. Louis. Tonight, a 17-year-old is dead after a double shooting in South City. Ira Vera Hale was killed on South Compton across from Gravoy Park around 3.30 this morning. A 16-year-old was also shot. He's expected to survive. And tonight, two boys ages 14 and 13 are recovering after being shot in North St. Louis. They tell police they were shot on Newberry Terrace near Page and Taylor around 8 last night. Both were shot in the legs. No word on arrests or motives in either shooting. St. Louis football fans are left watching football on TV, not in stadiums these days. But the Rams' departure could pave the way to a lot of opportunities. With millions of dollars and countless opportunities on the line, the I-team's Christine Byers delves into where the money is now and what's next in that process. As we watched a homeless encampment grow on the steps of City Hall just last week, there was one question that kept coming up. If they use the $280 million in RAM settlement money, set up affordable housing, put them in apartments, they, they would do something. Why not? Why not do it? What if your family member was out here? This is wrong. With big cash comes big opportunities for a city stricken with problems. 911 delays, homeless benefits, infrastructure. So where's the money now? The Board of Aldermen has been asking for the public's opinions on how to spend it. The I-Team wanted to know their views. We asked all of the aldermen what they want to do with the money. Here's the responses we got. Healing the homeless issue, repairing water and street infrastructure, more tow and garbage trucks, downtown investments, and keep some of the money to grow interest. It all started when Stan Kroenke took the Rams out of St. Louis. Fans responded and were literally fiery. Years later, officials filed a lawsuit against Kroenke and the NFL and eventually struck a $750 million settlement. The settlement was divided among those three entities that sued. The Regional Sports Authority got $70 million, St. Louis County got $169 million, and the City of St. Louis got $250 million. $30 million of that went to the convention center. In the city, it's a gold mine at a time of challenges. The first Zoom meeting discussing where the money should go happened late last month. We thought it was very important to um, create a hub, a home, uh, for all the community engagement that needs to happen around this very important once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. With opportunity comes controversy. The settlement money was scrutinized last year for sitting in a low-interest bank account. Leaders voted to change that, and as they decide to do with the money, it's already grown another $5.8 million. The online survey is open until this Friday. Then there are two more public meetings with the Board of Aldermen. Those are set for October 25th and December 2nd. For details on those plans and to see how your alderman responded, go to KSDK.com. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side. If you have a tip for Christine and the Five on Your Side I team, you can leave a voicemail at 314-444-5231 or email Christine at tips at ksdk.com. All those calls and correspondence will remain confidential. A personal artifact unearthed at the site of a former concentration camp. This is his story and it needs to continue to be told. Now it's keeping a local Holocaust survivor's memory alive. They're driving some St. Louis drivers in circles. Tonight, we're helping you navigate roundabouts to keep you on the move. All quiet now and for the next couple of days, but we're already monitoring the system in the Pacific Northwest as it works its way on shore. That's responsible for a big change for us by midweek. What it's going to do to us and if it'll give us a better chance for rain the rest of the week. Sports Plus is the place to be in 20 minutes. Despite the loss, Mizzou was incredible with over 500 yards of total offense. 
we'll hear from one of the St. Louis stars. Plus, we're going one-on-one -on -one with arguably the most important hockey person in our town, Jordan Bennington, and he talks about how he would like to be remembered. Showed courage and um, played hard, respected the game, um, brought success to people, cities, organizations. And if that's not enough for you, and it darn well should be, we are going to show you a sports bar in town that you have to see to believe. We'll see you in 20 minutes for Sports Plus.